content is intended to provide accurate information, however, is not intended as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult a financial, legal, or tax professional for specific information regarding your individual situation. Opinions expressed and provided are for general informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Welcome to Game Plan for Retirement, presented by Chris McIntyre, Northwest Ohio's retirement planning resource. And welcome into the program. This is your game plan for retirement with Northwestern Ohio's resource for important information on your financial investment and retirement planning decisions, helping to uncomplicate the financial world, bring in a dose of common sense. And if you've got questions or concerns, always here as your resource. He is Chris McIntyre, president and founder of McIntyre Retirement Services. If you've Got those questions. If you'd like a plan, investment, or retirement review, pick up the phone, give a call, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. Chris, when it comes to our money, so many different choices and options, so much information out there. And today we are going to try to boil some of that down and simplify it and talk about some of the most important investment options that we have. The placement of our dollars, where do they go and, and what do those vehicles do for us? Sure, Peter. Sounds good. And we'll try to keep it simple and baseline level for um, you know the general audience here today. And and maybe uh, doing it in the order in which many of us experience it, Chris, the first place that a lot of us go with our money is to the bank. We open those, those bank accounts, right? And that's probably the most frequent place that we access our money for transactional purposes. Can you talk a little bit about what banks are for and the pros and the cons and, and what we need to know about the banking industry and, and, and placing any of our money there? Sure. Yeah. You know, and checking and savings accounts, mortgages are, you know, have always been the primary function of traditional banking in the United States. And then through regulation and deregulation, if you will, uh, you know, they have opened up their doors to, you know, broader financial services, if you will. They might have a, a, a registered representative uh, at, at the bank office and you walk in and the teller says, well, geez, Mr. Jones, you got too much money in your savings accounts. Why don't you go talk to our financial advisor? He might be able to help you make more money. So, you know, they've kind of got that built in referral machine there. And whether or not, you know, we could all make an argument on is that what the bank is for, for a teller to make referrals to, you know, the bank's other uh, financial rep who may have a, you know, certain type, the bank may have a, certain type of relationship with a few limited number of companies for compensation, if you will. Yeah. And Chris, there is a difference in that discussion and relationship talking with the teller who is helping you facilitate transactions versus talking with uh, the the broker or the representative in kind of the back office. The difference between the tile floor and the carpet uh, and, and the small offices is, is a very distinct difference that we do need to understand when dealing with the banks, right? Most of us are, are are looking at checking savings, maybe money markets and CDs at this point in time, because those those rates have come up some, uh, but those are more transactional and generally safe and guaranteed, whereas there's a, a, a distinct difference that we do need to understand when talking with the, the broker that may be even at the bank branch office. Yeah. And sometimes they haven't been there. That might be their first starting place, if you will, because they need to draw some sort of a salary type thing. So Peter's analogy is stay on the tile, stay off of the carpet, right? <laughs> well, Chris, looking at the rates that are now available with, with the interest rate environment over the course of the last year and continuing to raise rates still, are some of those bank options now still or now more? more attractive than than they were in in maybe helping us to achieve both the safety and maybe a little bit of growth on our money? Oh, certainly, you know, because you can get some pretty decent CD rates out there right now. So there's nothing wrong with that. If you've got some passive money that you don't need for six, nine, 12 months, if you will, and, you know, that, that we haven't had, God, let's be honest, you know, 15, 20 years in all reality. And, you know, so some of the we buy them for our client CDs for our clients that are at TD Ameritrade because we can look across 
a myriad of bank offerings out there. I literally have 20 pages that get sent to me, you know, twice a week, probably on all the different CDs that are out there for us to buy on the, uh, you know, through our clients' accounts. So you have CDs available there at McIntyre Retirement Services. If if a, an, a saver is interested in maybe improving the interest rates without taking risk. Oh, absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if if you are maybe not earning as much as you would like, if you think that rates have improved, you'd like to shop them, see what else is out there. Uh, I know that used to be a, a a big thing where people would cross the street for higher CD rates or a free toaster, but uh, now's the time to maybe start that practice again because interest rates have improved significantly over the last year, and and you don't want to lose money safely. You don't want your safe money to be left behind and and not earn as much as it could. So give. Chris McIntyre, a call 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. Okay, Chris, we we save our money in the banks. There's enough there for the transactions. We've got our emergency account. And above and beyond that, we try to grow our money and we start investing. And we hear a lot about stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. If you would, could you run through a quick description of what those things are and where they play a role in, in our investment progress? Sure, you you can use uh, individual stocks uh, to help grow your nest egg over the course of time, right? Stocks would be long-term type investments, and most of that we're going to classify as a high-risk investment because you know uh, you know unforeseen things can happen, prices can drop significantly, but stocks can also play a role in creating income. You can get dividends from uh, from stocks like utility companies, energy companies, banks, for example, if you own JP Morgan stock or, you know, that's a, a good example, Bank of America stock, you know, you can get a dividend, which is just simply part of the profits of the banks paid to shareholders and price appreciation should the stock go up. So as a stock owner, Chris, we've, we've got kind of partial ownership of a company. And we hope that the value of the company appreciates over time. But the dividend component is the paying out of profits to the owners as well occurs on a regular basis. And and so whether we're looking more for growth in our portfolio or income from our portfolio may determine the type of stocks that we choose inside of the portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you think of like an Amazon, for example, they don't pay a dividend, they would be a growth stock. Even though they're wildly profitable, not not a dividend producing stock. <laughs> yep, yep. We're in it for the price of it to go up. And obviously in 2022, the price of it dropped significantly, more than 40% even. Yeah, well, uh, I guess uh, Jeff Bezos is is keeping those profits for himself, but takes it on the chin when something like that happens as well, right? He's got a big enough sailboat; he can put plenty of that money in there for sure, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so stocks are are one. Now that is one individual company, and so there is maybe a higher degree of risk there. And so to try to diversify some of that risk, Chris, and 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 maybe uh, water down the concentration of relying just on the the well being and the fortunes of one company, there are mutual funds. And and can you explain the concept behind a mutual fund and, and how they work essentially? Sure. Mutual fund is simply a group of stocks that have some maybe some similar characteristics like very large companies okay, or companies that are in the S&P 500 in index, which is the 500 largest companies domiciled in the United States. So that's a pretty broad base way to uh, to get a diversified stock investment portfolio and safer than having all your eggs in one basket. And Chris, uh, kind of an analogy there. If you go to uh, a horse race, you can bet on one horse finishing the race and the, the payoff might be very large or you can't actually make this bet. But I, I would assume it would be a bit of a safer bet to say that some of these horses are going to finish this race eventually. And and probably a better chance of that happening, but maybe a slightly lower payoff. Is is that kind of the, the risk reward ratio there? Yeah, yep, that's a good example because like in the S&P 500 on any given day, the S&P 500 itself may have gone up, 
but it doesn't mean that all 500 of those companies were up that day. Some of them were obviously down. So, you know, you get that uh, 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 diversified effect there of having money across different asset classes versus single stock exposure, if you will. And, you know, so that's what a mutual fund can do for you. And then, you know, we probably should mention an exchange traded fund, which is very similar to a mutual fund. They're very popular these days because they have lower cost to them. And you kind of get that same, um, you know, specialized uh, concentration of holdings, if you will, in healthcare companies, defense companies, utility companies, or even the broad base index as well at a very low cost. But uh, as I understand it, Chris, uh, there are some differences between mutual funds and ETFs or exchange traded funds. One one that is of note and importance is there could be some tax efficiency differences between the two. Sure. An ETF is very tax efficient because it doesn't have the buying and selling that a mutual fund manager may be doing uh, on the behalf of the investors in the fund. And so if you have a, a good example here would be a, a growth type mutual fund where there's somebody in there buying and selling on behalf of the investors for growth. So there you'll, you'll have, when you have buying and selling, you're going to spin off some capital gains or even capital losses, I suppose, to just uh, you know, talk in generalities. And Chris, those mutual funds can also include components of bond, or they can be oriented to generate income. There can be bonds included in a mutual fund or even specifically bond funds, correct? Correct. Yeah. So you could go out and buy individual bonds to match your individual stocks, if you will, or to complement. Uh, and typically, people will think of bond investing as safer than stock investing. And in that sense, that just simply means, well, I can hold my bond until it matures and I get my money back. You know, I have, you know, certain risk in there. I have one of a default risk. What happens if the company defaults or the government? Governments do bonds as well. Um, and then I also have the, the interest rate risk of owning a bond where if interest rates go up like they did in 2022, uh, my bond value is going to go down, so I may have to sell it for less than what it's going to mature for. So bonds can sell at a discount, less than what they were issued for, or they can sell at a premium where somebody's going to give you more than what it's going to uh, pay for, again, based off what the interest rate environment is doing. But Chris, if if we compare the two, buying a stock is taking ownership of a, a, a small sliver, a piece of a company where uh, some companies even may offer corporate bonds. Uh, and if we if we invest or buy a corporate bond, basically that is a loan. They are obligated to pay us back at some point in time. Uh, however, uh, again, got to understand what the difference is there between an individual bond and a bond fund, because we may not have those same uh, guarantees or obligations with a bond fund. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, bond funds took a pretty big hit that, you know, took it on the chin there in 2022. And, you know, there are bond ETFs, exchange traded funds as well, just like there are stock ETFs. A lot of folks who have those retirement lifestyle funds, Okay, like at work in their 401ks, which have become very, very popular, you know, have a have a, uh, a stock bond uh, relationship in there that as they get older, it's going to add more of that fixed income to the portfolio because in general, people are going to get more conservative as they work their way toward retirement. So, you know, again, that's, you know, that's kind of that, you know, instead of buying individual stocks and individual bonds, those lifestyle funds are very popular for people that are working because there's some sort of correlation to the age and getting a little bit more conservative in there based off of the calendar more so than the economic activity, I guess. Could you weigh the benefits and disadvantages of those target date funds for us, Chris? Because I know that those have have really taken off in popularity and, and utilization do you see that as being a good trend and, and beneficial, or is that something that we need to kind of uh, be aware of and, and proceed with caution if we choose that route? Yeah, yeah. So if I look at, you know, kind of the, the, the optimistic side of those types of funds for folks that are working, you know, it gives them something to put their money into anyway. Um, 
And, you know, instead of them having to worry about picking their own portfolio, they are getting some degree of, of management in there, you know, and that addresses their, their overall risk tolerance as they get older. The other side to that or the more pessimistic view may be people have no idea what the stock bond relationship is in those that, you know, I would think that uh, most people who bought a 2025 uh, retirement lifestyle fund think in 2025, it's going to be very safe. Okay. It's probably 40% stock, 60% bonds, you know, which in 2022 took a pretty good hit, obviously, because of all the economics going on. So, um, you know, I, I think that's probably the drag on some of them is they're really just a fund of funds. So a, a Fidelity 2025 fund probably has 20 different Fidelity funds in it. Okay. And then they adjust that mix based off of the calendar. Again, not very often are they set up to be driven by the economics or the current state of the market, if you will. It's the, you know, what month is it on the calendar? Right. And and driven by that calendar and the timeline, not real world conditions. So, you know, uh, when when the speed limit changes on the highway, they're kind of not making those adjustments, so to speak. And uh, so, again, you, you need to understand your investment options. What is in your portfolio? And that is part of the review and analysis that Chris McIntyre will run for you, help you better understand what you own, the risks that you're taking, the fees that you're paying, the taxes that you may be liable for, what each piece is geared to do and to help you accomplish the pros, the cons, and, and the qualities of each investment dollar for you. That is part of designing your game plan for retirement, a better understanding of, of where you are currently. And if you'd like to uh, get that handle on it, take a look at your investment accounts, your retirement accounts, maybe your 401k uh, from your employer. Are you doing the best things there? Uh, a lot of a lot of target date and life cycle funds there inside the 401ks, ladies and gentlemen, shouldn't necessarily just be on autopilot. You need to be informed about that. Pick up the phone. Chris McIntyre can help you out in running that detailed forensic financial analysis of your situation, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. Chris, I know another investment option that has been touted and designed to try to simplify the investment process are these index funds. I buy a fund and it simply mirrors an index. Uh, what about those? I mean, are uh, will they help to simplify or, or are, are they beneficial? What do we need to know about in, investing in in index funds. Sure, Vanguard built an industry based off of uh, of investing in the index. It's hard to beat the index. It's a very efficient way of in, of investing. It can be tax efficient as well. It gives you a a lot of diversification, right? If you own a, 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 a you know some money in the large company indexes, mid size indexes, small cap indexes, that type of thing. And even you know different types of bond strategies, corporate bonds, government bonds. Um, so you can build a very nice uh, portfolio using several different index funds. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Um, I suppose if I wanted to find a fault with some of that, would be maybe over diversification. Okay. Well, and and Chris, that is another place where we're seeing a lot of those options included inside of people's four hundred and one ks. Uh, make the lines add up to 100%. And a lot of people don't really have a full grasp on maybe what those options are or represent. Is that an area where you do help at, at McIntyre Retirement Services to take a look at at, at somebody's employer-sponsored retirement plan and help to uh, elect or make the best decisions with how those dollars should be allocated with those choices that are available? Yeah, Peter, that's a significant part of our business is kind of that pre-retirement planning for those that have an old 401k and they got a new job or for those that are 59 and a half and they want to do some things outside of their 401k, you know, and look at, you know, customizing a stock portfolio, for example, or even using some low volatility type stock funds. So, you know, a, a very popular one is uh, the S&P 500 low volatility fund where it kind of cherry picks the companies inside the S&P 500, which is 500 companies, to try to find the ones that have demonstrated the least amount of volatility. So uh, trying to, you know, 
for portfolio stabilization, I suppose, is a, a, a safe analogy on the radio today? Well, I think a lot of people wouldn't even know that that's an option that's out there or that exists, Chris. And and for those that may want to simplify the process or be a little bit more hands off, but still have that equity exposure, that sounds like could be an attractive option. Yeah, it certainly could be. You know, we're uh, uh, we like low cost investing, and that's what buying some indexes uh, certainly does for you. The technology index. You know, lots of popular pieces out there available now for you from a myriad of different companies, from Fidelity to Vanguard to Charles Schwab to BlackRock, you know, uh, Invesco. I guess here is disclosure time of the program, right? None of this is specific recommendations nor endorsements of of any of those companies or any of these products, Chris, simply uh, a review of what is out there and available so that you can uh, have a working knowledge and be better informed and, and make more informed and educated decisions with your dollars, ladies and gentlemen. But if you'd like to have your mix reviewed and evaluated, your investment allocation, your portfolio, your retirement accounts, and some suggestions on which of these options you may employ and utilize to best help to work to achieve your goals. That is what the conversation with Chris McIntyre is all about. The game plan for retirement, the complimentary, no cost, no obligation review and strategy session. Pick up the phone, give a call. 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. Chris, another investment option that we hear an awful lot about, and there seems to be more division on this one than almost any other choice that we've talked about on today's program is annuities. Um, What do they do and why why are they so hotly debated? Well, yeah, I, you know, um, maybe because they're the only instrument that can provide you an income you can't outlive. And, you know, there's a lot of people think that they're smarter than uh, one of the world's largest insurance companies, for example, that can hedge life and death, right? Because that's what insurance companies do, life insurance or annuities. And there are different types. So that's probably where we get into the analogy of, um, you know, uh, you know, not all, uh, all, put all your eggs in one basket, I guess. We're not fans of variable annuities at, at our practice. You know, they can be expensive. They have uh, direct exposure to market losses. We typically are going to use the safer side of the annuity world, which is, you know, a, a fixed rate annuity that pays a, a guaranteed interest rate for a guaranteed period of time. Could be two years, three years, four years, five years. And then we also use fixed index annuities, which can give you the ability to link your performance to a stock market index. The trade-off is I don't get all of the upside, but I get none of the downside is a pretty general statement. And then some of them have very uh, um, some good income elements to give you a lifetime income that you can pick when you want to do it. You know, don't have to put your money in there. Uh, and then if you die, the insurance company doesn't keep your money. You've got beneficiaries listed. You know, it, it certainly will pass on to your beneficiaries. That's probably one of the most common misconceptions of what an annuity is, is people say, well, if I, you know, they think of it like Social Security. If I die, it stops paying money out, you know, if I don't have a spouse or anything. And that's not, that's very rarely the case nowadays is that, you know, the annuity, a lot of times the income will continue on to your wife. You still can control the investment aspect of it. If you pass away, whatever's left is going to go to your beneficiaries, free and clear probate. Chris, you, you mentioned some of the two, three, five year fixed rate annuities sound similar to CDs. Why would we potentially consider a, an annuity over a CD or vice versa, a CD over an annuity? Sure. Well, uh, an annuity would be tax deferred. Where, you know, if you've got $100,000 sitting in your checking account and you put that into an annuity making 5%, for example, keep easy math, okay, that's $5,000 of interest. But since you didn't take it out, right, you didn't have to pay any tax on it. Where if you put $100,000 in a 5% CD from your checking account, that's $5,000 of interest that you're going to have to pay tax on. You get a 1099. And if you're, you know, paying 20% in tax between the federal and the state, you know, right? You netted 4%, not five. 
Okay. And and you also talked about the ability for annuities to produce income. You've talked about a couple other options. Bonds can produce income. Dividend stocks can produce income. Same question. Where would the uh, difference be or the, the advantages and disadvantages of utilizing an annuity strategy over one of those other options? Well, the annuity strategy would give you income for life. Okay? You have a contractual guarantee with the underlying insurance company. Um, and then, you know, on a stock bond portfolio, look, when it's, you know, when it's out of money, it's out of money. You know, some of the annuities have increasing income uh, uh, potential as well to help with the cost of inflation over somebody's lifetime. So there are differences and and I guess, Chris, specific to an individual situation might determine which is a more appropriate option. And that's one of the things that you do there is just weigh those considerations and, and the qualities of each option and which is the most appropriate to to help a client achieve those goals. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you don't put all of somebody's eggs in one basket anyway. So, you know, we're always diversifying portfolios is what are all the options that we want to utilize, you know, do we want to use, you know, stocks, bonds, ETS for, you know, longer term growth, some income. And then if the, you know, if we get to where the market, you know, is incredibly disappointing for, you know, not just one year, what if we get into this extended inflation period where growth is very muted, you know, we've got global conflict, you know, that we're dealing with right now, that typically drives inflation up because if we've got to do, you know, massive amounts of some sort of defense or military type things, right, that makes less goods and services available, which makes the ones that are out there more expensive. So, you know, conflict and war are, you know, our inflationary drivers as well. So, you know, we need to have another strategy on the side in case the stock bond ratio or stock bond mixture portfolio isn't getting it. Well, I think that the uh, Russia Ukraine situation, the China Taiwan situation, the the balloons that have been flying over our country, and some of the predictions by by some of the world's leading minds. I mean, Ray Dalio is is the founder of one of the world's largest head, hedge funds. He found uh, he predicted the 2008 market crash. He wrote a book last year that sort of predicted um, global conflict coming in on the way. So those those are scary possibilities that we hope never become realities, but things that we do need to sort of bake into our planning. And and uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think there's any one size fits all perfect solution or any investment option that is always the right answer, or always the best option. That's why there are so many choices and options out there. And you need to decide what's right for your situation. That's what the discussion with Chris McIntyre and the complimentary planning strategy session is all about. So you can talk through some of these things and and then how your money and how your portfolio would behave if, if different variables occurred. If inflation continues, if if uh, interest rates keep rising, if taxes go up into the future, if the market has a downturn, what pieces do you have to help safeguard you against those possibilities? Chris McIntyre can walk you through those conversations. Pick up the phone and give a call. 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. Chris, another um, investment choice and option uh, and, and one of a favorite of, of many people um, for for. It's kind of unique qualities. Real estate is something that a lot of people really are fond of investing in. What's your take on including real estate as part of a portfolio? And and then how do we go about doing that? Sure, Peter. And you were reading my mind there. When we talk about income, real estate can be a good income generating source. Some of you listening to listening today have rental properties and they generate income. Hey, uh, not everybody wants to worry about fixing the kitchen sink on a Saturday night. So uh, they may end up buying like a, a real estate mutual fund, a real estate investment trust or a REIT, you know, that uh, may contain retail buildings, retail real estate may contain medical buildings, you know, lots of different types of commercial spaces, apartment buildings and whatnot. And we use a lot of a lot of those types of instruments for diversification, right? It's different than stocks and bonds. Real estate's another asset class. So it's another diversifier and uh, can be a good income generating vehicle as well. 
lots of choices and, and options available there for you and your clients at McIntyre Retirement Services, Chris. And it, it sounds like that you don't necessarily have a a, a favorite or a, a um, slant in opinion on which one is going to always be the best, but but just kind of evaluate the the needs of your clients in order to arrive at that best conclusion. Sure. Yeah. That, you know, the, the commercial real estate market did very well in 2022. Uh, the bond market did not. The stock market, by and large, did not. And now we're starting off 2023. And, you know, the stock market and bond market have, have uh, you know, certainly come back. Uh, somewhat of a rally, I guess, if you want to call it that. And the commercial real estate market has not. So that's why you diversify. You're never sure which, what's the hot sector is going to be. And I'll make a joke here. At some point, they will all disappoint you. Let's just hope it's <laughs> not at the same time. That's why you diversify. Well, again, if you would like to look at your mix, your accounts, your investments, uh, and your plan, how to bring all of those things together and talk about the variables and, and talk about the, the different risks, issues, and opportunities to plan strategically, efficiently, and effectively, pick up the phone and give Chris McIntyre a call. Take advantage of the Game Plan for Retirement Strategy Session and to get that written Game Plan for Retirement in your hands. 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 800 800- 868-1194. So Chris, uh, obviously a very uh, quick overview of all of these things, but uh, you can talk those those over in more detail at that meeting, at, in those conversations for that review and strategy session. But we always appreciate you educating us a little bit more here on the radio. Sure. And you know, a lot of these things uh, look better visually than they do audibly. And uh, that's what, uh, you know, sitting in the conference room certainly helps to achieve. And uh, we appreciate everybody listening today. Thank you very much. Give Chris McIntyre a call. He's looking forward to hearing from you, ladies and gentlemen. 800-868-1194. We'll talk to you next time on your game plan for retirement. Tune into Chris McIntyre's full radio program and visit McIntyreRetirementServices.com for many additional valuable resources, including other great episodes of Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre. Be sure to subscribe. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management while insurance products pay a commission, which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation.